welcome to this week's tutorial. Uh, this is going to be the first video in a series of videos that I hope to release over the next few weeks. Um, and in these videos I'm going to look to create a really simple match report. It's not going to be something too complicated or too over the top, it's just going to be really basic. Uh, but I hope that you guys find it useful. Um, this is also going to be the first video that I actually voice over as we go, so just bear with me as I make my way through these steps and I hope it all turns out okay. Uh, if you're new to the channel and haven't watched any of my videos before but like what you see, please feel free to subscribe below so you'll be notified every time a new video comes or gets posted. So let's get started. In this video I'm going to step through really easily how I load data into Power BI. So I'm going to look at how I load all the files, how I transform the data in terms of renaming teams or removing columns, or even just checking that the data types are all correct. And then lastly, I'm going to go through how I create the relationships between the tables that we've imported into the software. So let's get started. First things first, we're just going to click the Get Data call, uh, button up in the top left here. It's going to bring up a new window and it's going to show you all the data sources you can read in data from. Simple as Excel, CSV, XMLs, JSONs. You can get from SharePoint or SQL Server databases and things like that. Like there's a really long list of data sources you can uh, pull your data from. Um, but for us, I'm just going to go really simple and I'm going to use a text CSV file. So you're just going to click that, click connect, and then you're going to find the data on your, on your computer and then you're going to load it in. So just give me a few seconds and I'll be right back with my data loaded. All right guys, so here is our data. This is a full data set from Stapspawn. So it's got every single event from every game in the Women's Super League. So one of the first things I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna change the file origin to Unicode UTF-8. This will just allow special characters be, to be represented properly and not giving you funny symbols in the middle of your, uh, your names and things like that. So from there, we're just going to click transform data. This is going to bring up our Power Query Editor. I'm going to get something just like this. This is going to show us queries on the left here. Our data's in the, in the middle here, and then any steps that have been applied to this data set. So as you can see, when you first read in data, it's going to have the source, it's going to promote headers, and it's going to change all the data types to what they need to be. One of the first very simple things we can do in this data set is we're going to change some of the team names. So here I like to just represent the teams as either Chelsea or Manchester City rather than having the suffix and the FCW or the WFC on the end. So one of the easy things we can do here is just right click on our column header, click replace values. So for this one we're just going to go space, FCW, click OK. So there we see that Chelsea is now just Chelsea. We can do the same thing for Manchester City. So space, WFC, okay. Easy as that. The next one we're gonna do is, we're gonna get rid of woman Oops, with a space at the beginning. There we go. What have we done so far? We've got FCW, WFC, Woman, and the last one in the starter set is LFC. So let's do that as well. LFC. There we go. So now if we looked through this, we're going to find that all our team names are just going to be Chelsea, Man City, Arsenal, Tottenham, things like that. Simple as that. All right. Next thing we can do is we can remove columns we might not need to use or see. So that could be things on here, for example, like, say for example, we don't really need to know if the, team, the, the event was off camera or not. So what you can do is just right click and hit remove. And that'll just remove the data, uh, that column from the data set. So you can do that for any number of columns that you want or anything like that. So for example, let's do it again. Half start, late video start, we can get rid of that one. So here, remove column, remove. 
Same here with tactics and formation. Easy as that. Another thing you can do that's really simple to help reduce the size of your data set is let's go to type name here. Some of the things that we don't need to keep in here are things like starting 11, as in this one we're not going to look to have who's in our starting 11 and how they're there. We're not going to have our, our tactical shift. So those are two really simple things that will just reduce the size of your data set in terms of the number of rows that are imported. Let's also just add half start as well to that. We don't need that one there. Right. And then again, if you want to, we can get rid of some of these other things on here. So we can get rid of the referee country, ID, stadium country, just keep the stadium name. Uh, we can get rid of the stage ID, metadata. So here I'm just hitting control and selecting all of these columns here. It's easy as that. So we can do that one. I'm going to leave that one there actually. We don't need these. For now, let's just do that. And go remove columns as well. Done. Right, easy as that. So now we have a slightly smaller data set. It's not as small as we would like, but let's leave it there. One of the other things you want to check is that your data set columns are correct. So for example, here we can look at duration. We know that the duration is not a string value. So what we can do is we can change our data column type by either clicking here and changing this to a decimal number. But the issue here is what we see is we have a lot of errors. So let's remove that. One way of changing those errors is we can do the same thing and clean the change of value. So let's go in A and we can replace it with null, just like that. Now, when we go to click, decimal number just treats it as a blank value so let's just do the same thing here replace values in a no and then again we can just select both columns by holding control and then we can go replace values oh sorry change data type that's what we were trying to do so change type here and we can just make that a decimal number as well so there we go so here we'll see the top we can see we've got 74 percent valid numbers 26 percent empty same here 99 percent are valid a couple of empty values but that's okay so that's one way of doing it so we're going to leave the rest for now and we can come back to that later Actually, we'll change one more while we're here. We just want to make sure that our team ID is a number, which it is. Okay, cool. I'm going to add a couple more data sets and then I'll come right back. All right, guys, now I'm back. I have had two more tables. One, I've got a team table, which I've updated myself, and I've added a logo URL and also color codes for their colors when they're home or away. And then I've also got a match table. So I've got every match in the league, a couple of seasons, where it was played, score, that kind of thing. So now that we've done that, we can hit close and apply in the top left here. And that's now going to read in all our data sets. So what you're going to see is a, a window appear just showing that our queries are getting applied and it's going to load in the data to the model. Now, depending on the size of your data sets, this may take a little while to happen. So I'm going to leave it here for a second and when this is finished, I'll come right back. All right, guys, I'm back. And now we've got our data sets loaded into our software. So we can see here, we've got all our tables on the right here under fields. So any of those we can use 
and create a visualization. You can also check the data on the left here. So we've got report, we've got data, and in there, if we open this up, it'll select one of our uh, field tables, and then you'll see all our data is here. So for example, in my stats bomb data here, I have 647,000 rows. When I look at my match table, I have 194, and so on. And here we'll see all of our column headers on the right. Those are all the things that we can use in visual. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to look at creating our relationships. So that's the bottom one here on the left, which is model. If we click on that, when we load in data, initially it's going to look through our tables and try and add the correct uh, relationships that are required. So for example here, if we double click on this arrow, we can see the two that have been created, which is match IDs. Those have been used to create our uh, relationship between these two tables. When it says that it's a many to one, it means that there is uh, one match ID here on one side, and there is many in our full data table. Our other one on this side, we just hover, we can see as well, but it's team ID to team ID. So again, if we wanted to, we can look at that. We'll see again, it's a many to one. So on one side with our team table, we have one team ID, but on our full data table, we have many because there's many events for every given team. We have single or both as well, but in terms of cardinality, we can also have one to one, one to many or many to many. Some of these you have to think about a little better in terms of how they uh, react in your report and how they might change how things are viewed or it comes through in terms of measures and columns and things like that. Uh, the other thing you can also, if you have both directions, then it will just mean that it's going to filter both sides and you, that's again something to consider. But if we click OK, that would be our model set up. It's going to apply a few things just in case we change anything. And now we've got our two. Yeah, so we've got our match table and our team table. So in this scenario, we can use both of these to create our filters and filter our data set to help us to create our match report. If we want to change this slightly, we could change team ID to filter our match table, or we could remove a, a one of these relationships to make sure that we filter one table by one thing and one table by something else. Or we can just do away with all filters and we can use those within meshes if we wanted to. But this is one of the simplest ways of working with Power BI. All right, guys, that's all for today. I hope you found that insightful and helps you to first set up your report before you start going. As I said in the start of the video, feel free to subscribe below. Uh, for any upcoming videos so you're notified when they are posted. Um, if you have any comments or questions, queries about what I've just walked through, please feel free to leave a comment below. Otherwise, hopefully you'll see you guys next week, uh, where hopefully you'll find some useful information to help you power performance.